Are you ready to get your house decorated without spending a lot of money? Well, in today's video, I'm sharing with you all new Dollar Tree DIYs. If you've been watching me DIY for a while, you know I love to get inspiration from high-end sites. When I was looking on Studio McGee's site, I found this gorgeous metal candle holder and I thought this we could definitely recreate with Dollar Tree items. So the first thing you're gonna need to pick up is a plate. I felt like the smaller plates would be best and I wanted to find one as flat as possible. So I'm gonna be using this white plate. And then you're also going to need one of Dollar Tree's clear glass vases. So to start off, we need to paint the bottom and I wanted this to have a metal appearance because in the Studio Mickey one it definitely looks metaled it has that hammered finish so to achieve this look I started by painting it with a base of black typically in most of our projects when we're going to be layering you want to start off with a base color and black seems to be a great base color for a hammered finish so I did one solid coat on the back side and the front side and then I let that dry completely Next, I'm going to try to add that hammered finish onto the plate. So I pulled out four colors from acrylic paints that I had. I was going for silvers, golds, I wanted some whites, and I also went with like an espresso brown color. So I'm gonna put those colors out and then using a paper towel, I'm gonna take a paper towel and crumple it up. I'm gonna dip the paper towel into my paint and then I'll dab it on my craft table to get off any excess. I want very little paint on my paper towel for this next step. Then I'm gonna start dabbing the various paint colors onto my plate. So I'll put on the gold, I'll add the silver, then I'll come in with the white. Now at this point, you really need to start blending. So to blend, I wanna start bringing back in some of those dark colors. So next I'm gonna be adding in that espresso brown color and that's gonna to tone down the colors and kind of mix them together really well. I took a step back and they weren't blending as well as I wanted them to, so I added a little bit of black, which was my original color, just to tone down the colors a little bit. Once I was happy with it, I let it dry completely. Then I used some E6000 on the bottom of my glass face, placed it on my plate, and when that was dry, I just added in a candle, and you guys will have to let me know how well you think my dupe turned out. This next item I really hope you guys can find at your store. I found these black and white wall decals and I thought they were so cute. I ended up picking up eight of them. I got four in black and four in white. I decided with these, I wanted to make a tray in that really popular checkered pattern. Now, if you didn't like the checkered pattern, you could do these all in the same color. Like I think this would look great if all of them were in white. Next, I needed some wood boards to put underneath. Dollar Tree sells these long wood boards. I'm gonna be using three. So I laid out the wood boards and then I placed the tiles on top in a checkered pattern. I pulled off the first two on the left side and I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to stick them on. The E6000 is going to give me a really strong bond while that hot glue is going to give me that immediate bond so I can move on with my project. So I'll continue doing this, taking off two of them, adding E6000 and hot glue until I get them all glued down. I thought this tray really could use some handles, so I went through my tub. I have this tub in my craft room with all of my handles and knobs, and I found these two gold ones. Honestly, I'm not sure where they're from, but you could use any gold knobs for this project or handles. And I'm just going to pull off the screws on the back and I'll E6000 the handles to the top of my tray. Let this dry overnight and you can style it. This would be so great sitting out in your kitchen or your bathroom.
This is the time of year that I like to pick up those spring florals at Dollar Tree because the selection is so much better now than if I waited a month or two. When I went to my Dollar Tree, I found all of these gorgeous lavender and purple florals. So I picked up three different varieties of the lavender. I also got a yellow stem and then there was a white stem I got and then those longer flowing cascade flowers I picked up as well because I wanted to put together a wreath. You guys are always requesting a wreath, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm also picking up a metal wreath form for this project. So the way I wanted this wreath to look is I wanted it to be color blocked. So I took off the labels to all of my different stems, and on each section, I'm going to be putting seven stems. So the way I did this was I bundled four together, and then I'm going to use a zip tie to hold them in place. So I put them on there, zip tied them in place. Now I'm gonna go back later and and kind of move them around and add additional hot glue, but I just wanna get the placement down in my flowers. So once I did one collection of flowers, I'm going to go to the next, and I made sure to kind of mix in those lighter colored stems so that they kind of fit in well in between my purples. So again, I'm gonna do that same technique, gather a bundle, zip tie down, and then go a little bit farther up, gather a bundle, zip tie down. And I'm gonna do this process all the way around until I get all of my flowers attached. From there, I flipped it over and I added some hot glue to the backside just to really secure in place where I put those flowers down. And then from there, I'll just flip it over to the front side, move everything around, add additional hot glue. And then from there, I'll hang up this gorgeous wreath. I think it just screams spring. The next time you're shopping at Dollar Tree, keep an eye out for these wood boxes. They have these really pretty fronts to them. There was three different varieties. You guys will have to let me know down in the comments which one you like the best. My favorite was the scallop box, but these wood boxes are great for adding in as little trinket boxes around your house. With the scallop one, I added in some dark stain to it. To put the stain on, I just used a paper towel and wiped the stain on. Because I'm using a paper towel, as I'm adding the stain, I'm also removing any excess stain, so it's kind of like a two for one step. But I put stain on the entire box and I let it dry. Here's how it looks in my decor. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is DIY. So when I was shopping at Dollar Tree and I saw those wall art where I made the tray earlier, I also found these little decorative balls that I thought this might be a really modern looking tray if I could get it to work. So I bought one of those. I also got a dessert plate over in the kitchen section. I E6000 this ball to the bottom of my plate, but because it was going to roll around, I had to use some painter's tape to hold it in place while it was drying. So I added like three or four different pieces of painter's tape around, and then I brought it up to the top. Now I did make sure I flipped it over and made sure that it was sitting level before I let it dry. But once I had it exactly where I wanted it, I let it dry overnight. The next day I came back in and I removed the painter's tape. Now I wanted to paint this a fresh color for spring. So I found this gorgeous green color that I had gotten a paint sample from. I mixed it with some baking soda and I did two coats starting with the underside side and then I did the top. Let that dry and then I came back in and did an additional coat of paint. And this tray would be so pretty sitting out maybe by your sink, you could put your jewelry on it, or it would be great sitting out by your kitchen sink next to your soap.
Last year, I created some nautical chain links and I wanted to try to do it a little bit different this year. So I have found the best product to use for this is the Crayola Model Magic. And I'm gonna be using two different packages that are eight ounces in size. If you buy the big container, it has four packages inside. So we're just gonna be using two to make two links. So start by taking your model clay out of the package and then you're just going to roll it up. I rolled it out as evenly as possible until it got to a long tube size. I was bringing the edges in to see if it was like the right size that I wanted it to be. Once I was happy with the length, I created another one. So I rolled another piece of the Model Magic out and I made them the exact same size. Next, I cut off one of the ends with one of my Cricut cutters so that it was nice and straight. And then to attach them, I used a little bit of hot glue to hold one of them in place. Now I wanted them to be linked together, so I just placed the tube through one of the others and hot glued the other one in place. Now I let this sit overnight and one of them I kind of propped up as it was sitting to dry so that they weren't sitting completely flat. And then the next day I used some yarn that I had in my stash and I wanted to cover up where those two ends met. And I'm gonna start by hot gluing it on the backside and I'll wrap it around so it covers. I did about one and a half inch thickness on the yarn. So I did that on one side. I also did it on the other side where I closed up the chain. Model Magic actually takes a while to dry and set up, so I let it sit out another night and here's how it looks in my home. I hope you guys could go shopping at Dollar Tree soon because I feel like in this video, I'm showing you so many of the new products that they have out. Another item I found was this wood scallop tray. These are so cute and I feel like scallop is definitely in this year at Dollar Tree. For this next project, you're gonna need two of the wood scallop trays. You're also going to need these little adorable glass candle holders. I bought three of these. I wanted the scallop trays to be a lighter color, so I'm gonna be using this sample paint color that I had and I'm going to paint two coats on my trays. And I'm going to be having them flipped over so you can see the bottom side. So I made sure that the bottom side was what I painted. Once I had that painted, I'm gonna come back in with rub and buff and a foam brush, and I'm going to lightly put the gold rub and buff around the edges of the scallop. I felt like this would help that detail really stand out, that scallop border. Now, once all my painting was done, I'm going to assemble two of the glass containers on top of each other with some E6000 and then I'll place one of the wood trays on top of that glass container. And I'll do the same thing with one of the glass candle holders. I'll put E6000 on the top of it and put on my other wood scallop tray. Now, if you haven't guessed, I'm making candle holders. Once these dry, I put them with some white candles that I already had. I found these new picture frames and I loved the cutout detail on them. So with one of them, I wanted to make a picture frame to set out in my living room. I started by going down about a third of the way and I'm gonna be using painter's tape on one side to tape it off. Next, I'm gonna be using black paint and I'm gonna paint the lower edge with a foam brush. I didn't go into any of like the inner areas. I just did a surface level painting and then I also added my paint to the edge. I did two coats of this. And once I had the second coat done, I pulled off the painter's tape. And once it was completely dry, I found a picture of me and my husband that I wanted to put in the frame. And then using that existing piece, I just marked around where I needed to cut. I cut out the picture and added it back in the frame. And here's how it looks in my living room.
Now this next project is a little bit out there, but it turned out really well, so I have to show you this DIY. So start by filling up a balloon. So I just blew up a balloon, and then I'm going to set it into some kind of dish. I just found a glass container to hold it in place. You're also going to need a set of wood rings. You can get wood rings at Dollar Tree, but I was wanting a variation in size, so I will put the link to the one I bought on Amazon down below. There's so many different sizes you can get with these wood rings. So I started at the top and I put the largest wood ring at the top. Then using a combination of E6000 and hot glue, I put that onto my rings to connect them together. Now, as I was adding these to the balloon, I was worried that the hot glue was going to pop my balloon, which luckily it didn't, but I was also worried about putting too much glue on. So I tried to use as little glue as possible. And I was also trying to make it so there wasn't a lot of space in between my rings, if that makes sense. So I added them on and I tried to make them as level as possible, but I knew this bowl was not gonna be perfect because I was using all different kinds of rings. So once I got them all on there, I let this sit overnight. And then the next day, once it was all set, I came back in and this was kind of fun, popped the balloon. And then I pulled off the balloon. And from there, I just tried to get any excess glue off of there. I kind of went back and forth whether I should paint it or not. You could probably see more of the glue because I didn't paint it, but I really liked the look of the wood rings. So you'll have to let me know what you think of this sculptural bowl. So in my pantry, I wanted to make an apothecary style jar just for like little items like our candies and our gums. So when I was shopping at Dollar Tree, they have these really nice glass containers that shut really well. So I picked up three of those. And then for my labels, I went on Etsy and I found these gorgeous labels that you could print and they were a direct download. So I bought those. I will link to the Etsy labels I bought in the description box, but you just print them out on your printer. I picked three of my favorite cut them out. And then to add them, I'm using the blue Mod Podge because that's a matte finish. I just added a little bit of Mod Podge to my glass jars, placed the labels down, and then added a little bit of Mod Podge over the top. I did go through and take off any excess Mod Podge because I find that sometimes you can kind of see it once it dries. So that helped by removing any excess. So I did that for all three of the labels. Here's how they look in my pantry. I just added in some of our favorite candy. Let me know down in the comments which of these DIYs was your favorite. I love knowing your opinion. And don't be afraid to try that project you've always wanted to try. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I hope you subscribe because I wanna see you back here. Bye.